This man reigns from Akron, Ohio, the red line of the auction business, Conky's Flippin' Adventures! Conky. Conky! Oh, man. Uh, hey! All right, this man needs no introduction, but they're paying me to do this, so... The man, the myth, the legend, Mr. What the Hell's Jeremy! Dun, dun. I'm here! Look at that. It's real. It's not just the one. from out west, Sandusky, Lorraine, Ohio. Some people call him Guapo with a capital G. What up? <laughs> Hello, everybody. How yeah, we, we live. Yeah, we live. We're live. We're Memorex. Oh, wait, we might be. I think we're just AI generated beings. I hear. I hear Noreen already going. Oh, <laughs> there's a delay. She was probably reacting to your finger up your nose. <laughs> hey, he was digging for gold. That's we what we do. We're treasure hunters. Video. Welcome for coming tonight. And that is part of treasure hunting, digging for gold there. And I tell people, I love my job. I mean, what other job? You get to go to work, you can find gold, silver, antiques, firearms, knives, Cassords. Cassords. Kakonkies. Kakonkies. Hiding in storage units. Who would imagine you roll up a door in a storage unit and there's a damn conky sitting there? I mean, come on. That, that, that's, that's a priceless storage unit right there. Yeah. So, you open up the storage unit doors and Conky and Noreen are making out. Hey, oh hey gosh. we're not going to go over that again, okay? Again? You would think you would as, learn not to open the door. If you two will ever stop. <laughs> if the storage units are rocking, don't bother knocking. <laughs> 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 oh, man. <laughs> Some people sleep in their storage units. Not Conky. <laughs> Nope. Oh, you don't get much suggest. <laughs> oh my goodness. So leave it to the conkinator. Yep. So like I said, we do appreciate everybody joining us today and uh another wonderful AA and just a typical day of dealing with police and uh bidding against Guapo and uh I mean just you know Cocky and Noreen making out we, in a storage. We, we, unit. we don't make out all the time. Yeah. Just during AA. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Monkey sugar. I swear I see tongue. I swear I see tongue. <laughs> you try to get it off. <coughs> yeah, so uh yeah, can't get no rain, they'll make out a lot. That's so, normal. Uh, That's normal. When you're out at a storage unit auction, they like they can't keep their hands off of each other. I know that. I'm like, I think uh, there's headlines in there. He's like, don't worry about that. I'm busy. <laughs> I think that's part of his strategy. He's like, we'll we'll uh, we'll divert them all. Distraction. <laughs> and then he comes bidding in. I can make out with my wife and bid at the same time. I, you know, is that, <laughs> not that difficult. <laughs> <laughs> you have experience, huh, Coggy? Yep. Oh yeah. It's, yep. it's not the first time you had a bid and make out at the same time. <laughs> yep. Hey, I, listen. <laughs> Uh, Valentine's Day, I think it was 2004. Um, instead of taking her out to dinner, I took her to her first gallery auction. Smart, you know how to win a woman, Conky. Yep. That's for sure. That's how you do it. Oh man, would they place first, <laughs> second, or third in the kissing contest? All three, nobody yeah. can compete, right? And, and they'd be like, you know, like who could kiss the longest, they would win that one. Most passionate kiss, they would win that one. I mean, they win all the kissing contest things. Oh, yeah. But we were talking about storage units, weren't we? What, Most the storage um, unit? They would, they would win that. Oh, man. We never know. So, we got a lot of stuff to discuss today. We've got, so, who, we got this. Uh-oh. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh oh, that's uh -oh. the upcoming storage unit auctions. Ooh, I, I'm liking that. So, wait, when's the when's the the valley? 
That's Saturday. That's that's uh, day after tomorrow. This Saturday? Yep. How many units? Um, seven to ten. He said. Okay. So don't don't fly home tomorrow. No, Mary Frank you says talking to me tomorrow. Are so sweet. They must be sweet because they're kissing each other like sugar. Yep. So we appreciate that, Mary Franklin and Conky Noreen. Well, they don't need any money to kiss, that's for sure. They'll just do it. <laughs> no kissing there. Two Saturdays. Yeah, Painesville. We got Susson. I got all Conky's toys. I'm going to have to get them. Conky's you- list. Conky's list looked a whole lot longer than that. He had like seven live auctions. I can't believe that. Well, there, she. We got Dean Saturday. Yeah, Dean, Dean Saturday. We got Payne Rob. Rose and that's Rob's. And then the, there's a um, premium. Oh, the rest is a Wooster run. Uh, the twentieth is a Wooster run. Mm. What time? Um, premium storage at ten a.m. and Guardian at two. Oh man. Mmm, pressure. Man, man, man. Pressure. Wow, wow, wow. Man, 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 man. This morning in the auction, they were supposed to have 10 units. So I tell Jeff, I'll just meet you at the house. Last unit's going up for auction. Jeff pulls in. I'm like, what the heck are you doing here? Well, I prefer to go to the auction. I'm like, this is the last unit. He's like, oh, yeah, right. I'm like, no, really, that was the last unit. <laughs> So Guapo showed up. Him and I got in a bidding war on the first unit. So I let Guapo have it. I quit. Guapo hasn't shown up here yet. Did he show Guapo up late through the unit. auction? He was actually early today for the auction. No, you're lying. I know well, not, you're lying. Not like, not, it was probably like well, nine early. He was there before 10 o'clock. It started at 10 o'clock. I was shocked because I got there like a minute to 10. I got stuck behind a truck going like, 30 and a 55. Yeah, I've been there. And then this all of a sudden, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I finally got around this truck. I'm going to make it. And then I was like, oh, my gosh, there's the train. The train things are done down. And I saw the train just sitting there. I'm like, oh, man. And then as soon as I start pulling up, it went up. And I was like, yay. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to make it to the auction. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. And then Guapo spoiled my day. I was like, man, Rory was there. Guapo was there. Basically, us three bidding against each other on the first unit. And it sold for how much? Nine seventy-five. Wow, that's a lot of money. Where was this auction? Medina. Oh, okay. Yeah, all these people were there because he said ten units, but then he updated it yesterday or this morning. And then if he he didn't put it on the top, he put it on the bottom part, so it said now four units. You know. Hmm. So all these people show up figuring there's going to be ten units, and there's only four, and then everyone's like. Uh. But you only need one good one, right? Yeah, that's it. You need one good one. It's the right four units. So now you had to deal with the sheriff department again. Again. Anybody want to give me some ideas how in the world they know I'm at a county meeting that I have never ever gone to before? I'm up front. They don't call me. They don't go to my places. On my properties, not on camera. How do they know? How do they know where to bring a piece of paper to me? They How? probably implant, implanted a chip in you. And why? You know, is that is that a comforting thing that the Levy County Sheriff know exactly where I'm at all the time? That they don't even have to call me? Or is that a concerning thing that well, why are they keeping tabs on my whereabouts? In a serious manner, there's only a few possibilities how they could know your whereabouts. How long were you there when they walked up to you with the paper? Over Five an minutes, hour. an hour, what? Over an hour. Over an hour, okay. So that, that increases the odds that that's why they knew you were there versus, you know, you just walk in and they hand it to you. It doesn't, it doesn't answer the question when I asked the deputy, Tummins, and he goes, well, my undersheriff told me. Okay, well, how does he know? I don't know. Why does the undersheriff know? Well, it's either they, they're pinging your phone, which is a possibility. Drone, another possibility. They could have a drone fixed on you all the time. You might not even know because it's that's what drones are there for. 
and yeah, and Levy County has so much money, so it's a good possibility. And I have a cell tower that they can ping off of, so they could know. they could have messenger pigeons. Maybe they went old school. They don't have drones. Maybe they all graduated from Hogwarts. Ooh, I didn't even put that possibility out there. Now that really that kind of, mm, that makes sense. Huh. I don't know. People are saying they could have a bug on your vehicle that could uh, tracking device on the vehicle. Yeah, that's tell. the easiest one. There could be a mole. <laughs> well, we do have a uh, we do have an infestation of moles, but a la most. <laughs> Here. Could have been conky. Wasn't me. I don't know where the hell I am half the time. I don't know how much supposed to know where Jeremy is. <laughs> Hold on. I know exactly where Jeremy is. Right there. He's 10 miles from nowhere. Right there. Nowhere. Pretty much. 10 miles that way. So if you're looking that's, for him. That's true. You get to nowhere. Go 10 miles to your left or your right. It depends on which way you're looking at that map. And you'll find him. Did you yeah, guys... Did you guys both watch that the video, the interaction with the sheriff? Yeah, that was ridiculous. I watched that, and I watched the one yesterday, and I kept thinking, this guy's, you know, he he doesn't talk like somebody who's a Vietnam vet living in Hong Kong for all those years. He he he, he talks about seeing <clears throat> satellite pictures of your property with green circles on your where your property is, and then towards the end, he says that he's mostly blind. It's very strange. So he, but, but he sees you know maps from a table away. <laughs> no, well, Scott Roberts right. said someone had to text the sheriff department number one. I would not feel safer. So he thinks someone texted the sheriff's department when you arrived. So Cronky, before I called Donald, I had already confirmed who he was, where he was. And every detail that he had shared with me in writing, everything I could verify, I verified. So I have all of it. I have his Facebook. I, I had his LinkedIn. He is absolutely in Hong Kong. And he is 100% who he says he is and his background and what he's doing currently. It is all there online. That's and scary. I already, that is why I contacted him. Because I went. That nothing that I can verify is untrue. It was 100% truth. And then I hear, I hear, you know, the the aspect of what I would call, you know, I, I would call insane. And yet at the same time, I have two insane people who stalked me to Otter Creek. And you know what insane people do? Insane things. And so... Before I even contact him, I already verified everything that I could that I had on him, and it was all 100% correct. And it's gonna make you scared in this crazy story, but in its age is, is what you're saying. So, so there's comments on his Facebook page from a year ago. Uh, I don't have his Facebook page pulled up on me right now to remember how many of the comments, but everything that he had told me before I contacted him, I had verified already with his LinkedIn, Facebook. We were looking everything up, con you know, contacts in place in Hong Kong, things along those lines. Well, Joan said they must be tracking you because they're getting close to the truth with all the corruption. Well, they ain't happy about it. Well, I tell you what, the, and the, who knows how far it goes? That's the scary thing, the corruption. And Donald did email me again. Donald emailed me again last night after he saw the video. And I have not shared it with anybody yet. I don't even think George has seen it. But um, I'll just leave it at that right now. Jeremy, did you see the other post on HK site? He did. Alex, uh, Kyle Alex says, Conky, next time you jump a bike, Will you wear a cape and I will pay for that cape? <laughs> I well, don't know if I'll ever jump a bike again, but sure, why not? Kyle, I think if you get him a cape, he will we'll make sure he jumps another bike. But you gotta put like something like a on the back of the cape. You know, it can't it's gotta have a C. Like it's gotta a have giant, a C. A giant C, right. Something like that. <laughs> for so 
If you get him a cape, Kyle, I will make sure Conky jumps a bike. You just got to send that cape, though. It has to have. It can't just be a, a regular cape, though. Like Jeremy said, it has to have a C on it. That's funny. Where am I going to get the bike? <laughs> oh, what? Well, we, come on. We know people. Right. Storage unit. Um, don't worry, we'll find you. A, Guapo we got you a bike people. at one time. Boom. There's a storage unit auction this Saturday. What are you talking about? Where are we going to get it? So, we'll find so you if I bike. find a bike in that storage unit, I have to jump it. Is what you're saying? No, you got to get the cape first uh, before you jump anything. Think about you flying through the air with your cape on, Conky. Conky, I believe you can fly. <laughs> I believe you can touch the sky high. Jumping motorcycles every day. You're living free and you just want to fly away. You guys want to see something funny? Yes. <laughs> it's better than our singing, I hope. <laughs> There's the cars I jumped. Oh, there they are right there. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Those are the cars I jumped at half mill time to grill. I keep them right here. All and the perfect. ramp is actually right behind the, uh, the what do you call it, the sandblaster. Nice. And that Wonderful. was an awesome jump, man. Hey, everybody thinks that Fonzie's motorcycle jump on Happy Days was the best jump ever <laughs> on, on media. Nada. Negative. Nope. Conky's jump, half mil time to grill. It was me jumping those. And here's the funny thing. I actually thought anybody sees the jump knows it was it's kind of a kind of a joke. But I I didn't really didn't know Travis all that well before we did that. And I actually for more than a moment thought that he was crazy enough to actually bring out one of those big ramps that the professionals jump. And a big motorcycle, and he was gonna <laughs> have me actually jump, jump something, you know, where you know, I would have loved that. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Only thing I no, remember wait, now, now, what is Noreen doing to Conky? Conky's got his cape. Oh, god, how did you? What is this? It's a cape, whip together a cape, man. That's a good woman, right there. Whoa, we know that's we're part we're of constant role playing. <laughs> Who needs monetization, anyways? Uh, it's look at it, it's satin. My last job. Okay, so there is a C on it somewhere. Yeah, nice there's a C. I'm supposed to put that thing on and leave it on. Make it like a bib. <laughs> Get him some lobsters. This neat man needs some sugar. Stat. All right. Do something super. Oh, it is a conky. That's Conky's cape. Oh, man. It's Conky's world. We're just living in it, people. <laughs> yeah. We're just living in it, man. So true. Jerry and I were just floating around in Conky's world. Guys, can you guys believe that uh, Harry said that was a year ago we were down there for that? Isn't what? that hard to believe already? A year? Wow. That was fun, too. Oh, we had a blast. That was so much fun. I never... You know, every, with getting on YouTube, there have been some tremendous battles from, you know, from fighting just to film storage unit auctions to the battle I'm in now. But never in my life did I ever think we were going to do anything as fun as half mill time to grill. It was just an experience. I, I can't. I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. The day was like a whirlwind. It was so perfect. It started off, we got there, and it was, like, drizzling, and everyone's like, oh. And the rain just kind of went away, and it's just everything. When the sun came out, and just Conky was able to jump. Yep. I no, I did to... wipe out a couple times. Oh, yeah. You <laughs> you hit me, Conky. Yeah. Remember you ran in front of me. Oh. oh I, got... I need to find that video again and watch it. Speaking of while watching videos, Storage Legends! Storage Legends! Oh my gosh! He's here. Me right now? I don't think so. Legends, legends. What's you, up? You know, you know what? Legend, legends is gonna throw an epic party. I don't even, I'm gonna have to crawl. It's gonna be the dirty thirty. We're finally at thirty k. <laughs> What's he at? He's past thirty. Where you at, Guapo? 
dude, I'm gonna be turning 30 years old. I did that's that one. Party. Yeah, Let me see where storage legends at. Not yeah. a lot, man. I suck, man. Donkey, remember when you turned 30 years old? Yeah, that's awesome. What was going uh, on? He's at 35, 40. What rhymes with 40? Sporty. The fabulous 40. 40. When I turned 30, I had fantastic frag grenade. Everybody gets warties at Guapo's 40s. There you go. Warties. You got anything else that rhymes with 40s? I don't know. 40s. Uh, um, Quarties. Corgi. Everybody gets corgis. Corgis might work. Guapo's at 35. Just to get greeted by George made the day for me, Darlene said, at a half a mil time, the grill. Yeah, George was doing gift bags or whatever you call them. I don't know. what the, I don't know the Bling bags, what'd you call them? Swag uh, bags. Swag, swag bags. bags. Uh, I'm not hip, man. Hey, guys, you, guys you, look at this. Look at this. Hold on. Might be time for another party. 700K time to play. Three quarter of a mil, time to grill again. <laughs> Dang, that's that's big time. Or maybe maybe it's three quarter of a mil. Everybody gets a dill, <laughs> and we tickles out to everybody. <laughs> Everyone gets a dill. <laughs> uh, I see we all go, and then we march to the courthouse or something. Oh, Everyone my. gets a dill. <laughs> <laughs> pickle, a dill pickle. Guapo, a pickle. Starless says, I want to thank all you to inspire me to buy my first four storage units recently. Wow, apparently she found some money because she's dishing it out tonight. That is that a must nice be a good, 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 good storage units. And uh let's talk about buying storage units real quick since Starla just brought this up. And we appreciate, I mean, uh, the people that we've inspired out there. The storage unit game is a crazy game. But it's a fun one. It's a fun one. And you can relate it to gambling or whatever else. Um, like Guapo and I, we went at it today. And you're going to have to check out Guapo's video to see what he got in this unit that him and I were battling against. What do you think won out of that battle between me and Rob? Guys, type it in the chat. So, um, buying storage units... The one positive thing about a storage unit is that when you buy one, you're not going to walk away with nothing. <laughs> sometimes you no, wish you walked away with something. Or sometimes you wish you walked away with nothing. But uh, usually, like, if you spend whatever you spend, there's some, there's at least some stuff to get some of your money back. You might lose money on the storage unit. Don't get me wrong. But to lose all your money is very difficult on a storage unit, unless you're bad at buying and reselling. So we're glad we inspired you to buy four storage units. And uh, sometimes buying four is better than just buying one, especially when you're starting off. But you hey, have to hey, be Rob, able to... would uh, Can you full screen me? Of course. That's funny. Justin. I'm just you curious if that. you guys if you guys would buy this one that that went up for auction and it ended this morning. I would have bought it. The rugs? Could those rugs really Maybe be? Worth it's out of creek. Rug dealing. <laughs> <laughs> I bought a I bought a rug dealer's unit. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly what it would be. I bought a rug dealer's unit. <laughs> Look at this. This is all it is is rugs. <laughs> rugs, rugs, and more rugs. Man, now now you gotta, I gotta look for the one unit I was. That is a rug dealer unit for sure. Starla, don't spend this kind of money on a rug dealer's unit. That's that is the rug dealer's unit right there. Wow. That is a rug dealer's unit for sure. Thank you so much, Starla. And um anyone that wants to buy storage units, Mary Dale, super sticker. But anyone that wants to buy storage units, I mean, do your research. And when you first start off, buy what you see. I mean, that's what I tell people. Don't buy on hopes and dreams because it's hard to cash in hopes and dreams. Max laughs at Jeremy. Did you get the Orlando unit? Well, 
Max Labs, here's what I'll tell you. There are there's one person other than me in this chat that right now knows. And so you're going to have to decide which person is telling you the right answer. Two don't know, but they're going to answer anyway. They're going to answer either yes or no. Conky, did I get the Orlando unit today? Well, yes did, or no? I mean, I, you know what we talked about? You bought it today? All right. Guapo, did I get the Orlando unit today? Yes or no? I'm going to go yes. All right. Rob, did I get the Orlando unit today? Yes or no? No way, man. There you go, Max Labs. You got to decide which one of them truly knows and if they're telling you the truth. <laughs> don't listen to me, Max Lab. I definitely don't know. It's possible we could all be lying. Yeah, that did not. I don't know. I don't. Yeah, I got about it in 08, so I could have forgot by now. I got a huge jewelry box today. It was nuts. Yo, you ruined it, man. Oh, man. You didn't say it? I don't know. I, I'm late. I'm late. I didn't say I didn't say I just told him we bid on unit, but yeah. That's why we were bidding a lot. Guapo beat me. Yeah, it was nuts. It was nuts. See, people were saying Rob won, and I did not win. Guapo beat me. And I can I can take that. I can I can lose sometimes. I can win sometimes. And I can tell you one thing. He found one item in there that's worth one fourth of what he paid. Just one item. It he was paid nuts, a lot for man. You should have stayed, dude. It was it was pretty sick. Man, I, I don't know about the others. She had three well. units. Yeah, I didn't know that. I would have took that guy's unit. I was trying to explain that. that to you, but you weren't listening to me. I was like, she has three. Marilyn Raby sucks dry. Oh, great. I, said, I warned Jeremy not to mess with me three years ago. All this drama is just starting. Man, what I would give for Marilyn Raby again. <laughs> yeah, you thought you thought your missing trailer was bad. Yeah, <laughs> no kidding. Thank you, Marilyn Raby. Sucks drive gravy. We appreciate that. But uh yeah, you thought when your trailer got stolen, that was bad. But Tricky Chi says, I can't stay going to bed soon. I just want Jeremy and George to know that I'm here for you and that in my prayers. Jeremy, I cried during today's video. The sheriff was a bleeping jerk. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. And um, I know you got emotional, the, Jeremy. One of the most difficult things is the restraint. I have to continue <laughs> to hold back again and again and again. My civil rights are being taken from me. I'm being I'm being threatened by psychotic people across the street. I've been assaulted by the victim advocate's son. I've got sheriff that won't do their job. I can't even protect myself or anyone that I love around me, my friends, my family. Yeah. And so the only thing I can and then these guys are protected by a badge, right? Immunity protected by a badge. They, they ain't gonna do it. And the only thing I can do is nothing except show my frustration. And it's everything inside of me wants to unleash. And I and I know you fellas know what this is like. And yet everything inside of you has to continue to hold back and hold back and restrain and restrain and restrain and restrain and restrain. And restrain. It's kind of like worth it. it's not worth it. There's a bigger yeah, picture. It is. It's kind of like the ladies fact. out there. They got a stat, hot, hot as guapo, straight stud. It's kind of like I'm the gonna, ladies. They got to, they got to restrain themselves, restrain themselves, restrain themselves from guapo. I was talking to a chiefland you, cop Kyle. today, and a chiefland cop said to me, "He goes, you know what, Jeremy? Jail's okay sometimes." And I went, "I've been telling George that since day one." He goes, "You <laughs> need this is a Chiefland cop, okay? This isn't Levy County Sheriff. This is a Chiefland cop. You guys know Chiefland is over where Walmart is, and and That's he has my number. Sense. And he said, he said, I'm okay. He goes with my morals and values. Somebody does the wrong thing, he goes, I'm okay with going to jail for the right thing. I went, yeah, I, I'm okay with going to jail for the right thing too, because the law isn't always right, That's and true. it's getting to a point. It is very much so getting to a point where. It's wrong, 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 wrong. And the only thing I can do is, you know, you have all this inside and you're restraining it back. And it's it's, it's becoming extremely difficult, extremely well, difficult. Lynette says she was so happy you called out the deputy today. I was clapping, Jeremy. And he needed to call out the deputy because they're there to serve and protect. I'm shocked they didn't try arresting me, to be honest. You know, and um, me too. 
you're, is this going on YouTube? Is this going on YouTube? That's all it's about YouTube. It's like, no, I'm trying to film this before I protect myself because, you know, it was just the, ridiculous. The deputy literally in that interaction proves why I have to film for protection and why I have to post it on YouTube for accountability. He proves it. Right. He's like, oh, this is just for YouTube. No, someone threatened my life. They sent it to the sheriff department. You guys need to take it seriously. Then the sheriff tracked me down, probably with a tracker. I mean, I, it's, it's just out of control knowing who you can trust and who you can't trust. There's probably someone up in the tree with a scope watching you. It was me. I got I got tracking on you, man. I, I implanted a, a tracking device on you, dude, when you were sleeping a couple years ago. You could have just done it when I was awake. I would have been like, all right, cool. <laughs> I had to do it while you were sleeping to film it. Hey, Rob, put Did Mary's comment up on the screen. Oh, I, I put something in your Mountain uh, Dew at barbecues. Well, now the truth is coming out. Yeah, that was Rob, it. I said, I, no, Mary Walton. At Gatorland, there was a... Mary there was some, Conky and Mary so sweet. Which one name is? There Mary was a Walton. chemical in your corn. I'm going, I'm going. Mary who? <laughs> I put something in the Mary cheese, Dale. man. I'm working with the corn lady. You didn't know? <laughs> I'd like to be working with the corn lady. That's what you're talking about? <laughs> Thank you, Mary Dale. I met the corn lady at, um, at that spot in Dayton. <laughs> When I made that whole manager scenario thing up, dude, it was really the corn lady that I met and hired her. Hey, we'd all like to be working with the corn lady, but George George was the only one that got her number. Oh, yeah. Oh, I know. I know. The corn. <laughs> <laughs> On the right. Jeremy's going to hulk out. Too much drama. Hello, rest of you guys. Thank you, Francis and Jeremy. He can't hawk out. That's Conky's job. Conky's the hawk. Okay, be the ladies hawk. and gentlemen. So let's not let's not confuse Conky and Jeremy together. Conky hawk hawks out. Jeremy's Superman, so he's Superman's out. Guapo Spider Man, and I'm Batman. Okay. And Tricky Cheese says I was I so upset with the sheriff's actions. I wanted to come through the camera. I literally love Francis. I just want to say that in front of everybody here. If you guys aren't subscribed to Francis, subscribe to her, even though she doesn't make videos. I love Francis Rampy. She's Francis. amazing, Thank an amazing person. Everybody loves flowers, her. flowers to Grant for legends. I mean, she just does so much. She's so active. I love Francis Rampy. I just want to say that to everybody. I'm still just thinking of hail stealing Conky's powers of hawking out. I just, I give it's just like Superman becoming the Hawk. I just can't put the two. They're different universes. I mean, it's just. Have they ever been, even been in the same comic book? No. Oh, yeah. That is a weird picture. I never even noticed that. Marvel versus DC. Two oh, different. Oh, wait. But the Hawk, Hawk and, yeah, Hawk and Spider-Man are Marvel and, and Batman and, and Superman are, are DC. DC. Who would win that battle? Honestly, Superman and Batman would win that battle probably 100% of the time. Well, Superman wins everything. You can't kill him. Yeah, you'd need to get kryptonite. But, like, I don't know. The fact that, like, Batman doesn't have any powers and wins that battle in the comics and actually wins in the movie is beyond me. That makes me Well, let sense. me explain something to you, okay? He's rich. Batman always wins. <laughs> Just like if Conky and me went to go fight. Right here. <laughs> That's fire. Batman versus the Incredible Hulk. Right here. Mm -hmm. Me and Conky. Nice. Mm -hmm. So they did Ooh. have crossovers between Marvel and DC. That's fire. So, uh, yeah, it's it's a uh, crazy. Did you guys get to see what was in my safe last? We kept talking about it. Did anyone see my safe video, man? No. I I didn't, but man. I've been on all these other channels that are covering my court case. Conky, you see it, man? Come on, Conky, come through. Man. I think I did see, yeah, the... Yeah, thanks, Conky! Such a liar. <laughs> the guns. That's There was guns, that's for sure. How guns many? And... Wow. Five rifles, shotgun, 22, three military World War II guns. Wow. Russian, Japanese, or Chinese, and... Uh, I believe U.S. 
And then gold. Man, you Rob's getting the good stuff, man. That was some crazy. It was the best, best gun safe I've ever opened. By far. Man, Rob is on it. Rob has been on it. I hope because I got a unit tomorrow I got to go pick up. I'll show you a quick screenshot of it. Isn't there like another storage unit auction? Do I have it? There's a bunch of them this month. Is there? If I have it. Well, we got the one Saturday. We got Susson and Painesville next week. And then we got the, um, the Wooster run. Oh, yeah, we got Dean um, on the 9th. Man, I got to go to California, though. Why? I got tickets to uh, this, like, random concert. And if I don't sell them, I don't want to eat them. I just want to go to the show. Gail Davis said, Rob, great gun safe. Gail, it was unbelievable. That was a wow, wow, wow gun safe. I just couldn't believe it. Because when I first moved it the first time, I heard the one gun go. I heard something go like, it sounded to me like a long gun go boom. But then every other time I moved it, I didn't hear anything. But the guns kind of got like locked in together. So it wasn't moving around anymore. So thank you so much, Gail Davis. It was awesome gun safe. And I hope I bought a unit today with a safe in it. I hope that's safe. It's not a gun safe. It's just a regular safe. But I'm hope I told told Hales about it earlier, I think. We did. And I told I told you I bought a unit too. So Max Lab, Rob was lying to you, but Oh um, man, you ruined it. But Kyle, this is, Alex, Amy I don't know if it's gonna be any screen. good. I don't I don't know if this unit's gonna be any good. Hold on, I gotta but, full screen you and then I gotta talk about this. <laughs> okay. But this is this is what's inside the unit. I don't know if it's gonna be any good, but I, you know. I don't know. It looks like a bunch of bricks. Like Gold bricks. Who would want gold this bricks? Part, it's reminding me of the you rock. Overpaid. To be honest. You overpaid. The Kyle Alex have... Amy wants to know if Conky is wearing underwear. Conky? I'll right now. Tell. Conky, you wearing underwear? I'll never tell. Wow, never you tell. just have to you just have to wonder. Yep. That's just something you just have to use, use your imagination. Well, I, I can like, tell you, you know what? That's a better move sleeps right naked. That's a better move. I gotta take when we notes. went to Camp Hales, we all found out Conky sleeps naked. We're like, yo, Conky, that, put some hilarious. pants on. <laughs> Last thing you want to do is see Conky walk around two in the morning at Camp Hales. Oh my While god. you're tiling the floor. Because because Rob is is tiling. Yeah. <laughs> That's why you don't want to see him, because right. Rob is tiling. Uh. Trust me. You don't want to see it. <laughs> We talked about that today. Yeah, he, he made me. <laughs> I, he, I was playing this guitar and he was like, Rob's tiling the guitar or whatever. Yeah, dude, the, the guitar had tiles on it. I'm like, dude, wouldn't you tile that? Dude, we're still waiting for you to get out of Creek done. <laughs> so, Conky will have to tell us later if he's wearing underwear. What the what feather? The, what the hails? I mean, what the feather? <laughs> Rocky Nelson says. Did anybody see. I, you guys probably haven't didn't watch my uh, my live last Saturday. Thank you, Rocky. Where I did an imitation of the DUI guy doing the feather. You know that. Is that what he's uh, talking about? Ah, uh, you did yeah, good imitations, Kongi. So I, I was going to challenge him to a uh, imitation of the judge saying feather. You know, with the the thing, but I I don't know if he. Uh, I don't know if he's up for the challenge, so I guess we'll have to see. Mark Feather. I, I can do it pretty good. Let's see if I can do it again. Fix my chair. Everybody Mark. on the other hold end on, of the right now. Conky. Mark. Conky. <laughs> Just like that. Nice. That's pretty good, nice. Conky. That's good. One more time, Conky. Mark. <laughs> nice. You know what? I'm gonna have to stream record that, man. We're gonna use that as the intro to a couple a couple videos, actually. Scott Roberts says, "I love all of you, Mark Feathers." <laughs> yeah. Thirty nine. Mark Feather is is it means all you MFers. 
So Judge Craig DeThomasis keeps saying, you M effort. He keeps saying, you Mark Feather. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's what uh, Mark Feather means now. So it's like the Brandon so, thing. So when's the next court date? It's a really good question. Thanks, guys. Uh, everything is on pause right now with county court, and it's not an official stay, but it is up for review of whether the Thomases can stay on as uh, as the judge. But as Lynette and Crook found out very quickly this week, they are now being sued in the federal courts. And they are being sued for it, for extortion, for uh, defamation, and there will be many, many other things coming down the pipeline as well. So uh, there is now two cases going on, one at the county level, and now there's one at the federal level. Wow. And I can't tell you the dates on either but I can tell you, I will spend every last penny I have to make sure the right thing is done. I'm just thinking of how many court dates you're going to have to go to from now until whenever this is finished. I could only imagine, man. I And I hate court, dude. I go live, dude. I just go live. Go live in court? I don't even care. I just... I walk in there and I just go live. I don't even care. Storage Legends, here I am. <laughs> hey, Judge, you, you, you subscribe yet? <laughs> subscribe, Storage Legends. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, Judge, Bonnie says you you look nice today. <laughs> I got some comments for you, Judge. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, dude, you should see. Actually, I live streamed my last court, and man, it was funny, man. We were, it was actually funny. I, Rob was like, live stream 4 99 for the judge to let you free. That are you trying to bribe me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Someone just said 14 99 judge. Just we let me be. Those tickets. Come on, guys, send them some super chats. <laughs> Give the judge. <laughs> <laughs> we can pay these tickets. Hang on a second. <laughs> hold, on, hold on, Judge. Hang on. Give me a second. Hold on. Let me talk <laughs> to the show him what's up. Oh, oh that's funny. That yeah, no, no, no. We, we, I, when I live streamed, it was super funny. It really was. I, I, I said some very like cool things where the judge kind of was like, all right, well, this other guy's a Robocop. So, of course, he's going to ticket you. So, we're going to throw this one out. And then this one, just pay this right now and you're good to go. Or something like that. All the legends in the chat, I tell you, they were live on there. I, I'm pretty sure you were on there too. <laughs> you jumped on there and said, I was this, on there. This is ridiculous. Get off live. I think you might have said, What are you me. doing, Guapo? You might have texted me, like, Yo, get off live. I'm like, I don't even care, bro. I'm going in. I'm going in, bro. And, <laughs> and the judge is like, You got a speeding ticket. Take me in. I'll do it. I don't care. <laughs> Not I'm not me. That's funny. Oh, that's funny. You got that. one speeding ticket, man. All you got to do is pay a ticket. Whatever. Guilty. I plead the fifth. My, <laughs> I plead the fifth. My mother. Yeah. You know, you know, I'm not saying nothing. I won't say anything until I talk to my attorney. Guapo. You got <laughs> Redneck treasure. Ticket. Thank you, Redneck. You got one speeding ticket, dude. You Your honor. Lowercase e. Yeah, <laughs> you're not gonna lowercase e me, man. You see this? You see this? Send With me. A capital. It wasn't me. I was framed. I'm a capital e. Yeah. yeah. I plead the fifth. I need to talk to my attorney. <laughs> dude, you own. Dude, you just have to pay your speeding ticket. I plead the fifth. I won't say nothing else. <laughs> I need to be appointed counsel. <laughs> He's been talking to line up. Dude, you got a speeding ticket, dude. You're supposed to give me one. I need my phone call now. <laughs> I want my phone call. I'm calling, I'm calling State Farm. I call up Jeremy. Jeremy, what do I do, dude? I don't know. Get off of the live stream now. Dude, what do I do? I'm live streaming and these guys, these guys are trying to frame me. <laughs> oh my gosh uh guapo what's your charges dude they're trying to say i got a speeding ticket bro i'm dude i'm ready to go in bro oh that's funny 
<laughs> Look, Darlene, Darlene's like, my lawyer told me to speed. I swear he said it was okay. That's line it. <laughs> That's like, what line that would say. Line that would my like, lawyer told me. My lawyer said it was okay. I plead the fifth. <laughs> That's funny. I get held in contempt. I was like thinking be funny. Guapo's in court. I, yeah, I live streamed my whole court date. Orders a pizza. Cool. I think I'm gonna live stream my next court date. I live stream. <laughs> you should. That's Maybe funny. I'm gonna call it the unredacted, <laughs> the unredacted live stream. I'll be in your channel just saying, get off. This is ridiculous right now, bro. I'll fly down there. Oh, my goodness. Philip said, Guapo, you can't go live. It ain't redacted. Laugh out loud. Thanks, Philip. Ah, uh, Philip. I like that picture, too. It must Phillip, be him I went son. live, man. I, oh, I went man. live for sure. We started talking about, like, the Mothman or something. The Mothman prophecies. That's yeah, good. we started talking about the Mothman, and we started just talking about stuff. That's funny. But yeah, I got a $975 unit today. The episode's almost done. <laughs> Selling so much stuff every I single day. I can't believe you didn't buy that unit for 200 bucks, dude. I know, I know, I know. The guy, oh, hold on, let me go back. Stupid, a lot of people stupid. don't know what the heck I'm talking about. You're going to have to watch Guapo's video, but... This guy bought another unit there. We we found out the lady had three of the four units. The one guy bought one of her units, and he paid what two seventy five or three hundred. Yeah, and I was seventy five. You were you almost went to three hundred, but you yeah, I almost went to three hundred. So Guapo was already bidding. He went two fifty. The guy went two seventy five. Guapo and I'm complaining the whole time that I lost. Too, I'm mad I lost. He said I should have bought that unit to us. So the guy goes, listen. I will sell you the unit for the two seventy five. No, so the first, the next unit was sold. Then he comes and says, yo, yo, you know, he realizes how much work. The Hot Wheels are gone that were in front in the front of the unit. He took the Hot Wheels. And then he started getting really rude and stuff, dude. This is. I don't know. I didn't see it. I just know he said he started to give it to you for 200. Yeah. He started to get like. Yeah. He started to get a little rude. Even Chapo said it. He was just like a little pushy. And then the one girl was like, the one girl comes out and goes, put your money where your mouth is. I look at the girl, I'm like, lady, you already sold the unit. This money where your mouth is thing doesn't work anymore. <laughs> right, Jerry? She goes, put your money where your mouth is. Lady, the unit sold. She was just trying to fire you up. You got to fire me. She's like, I'm just talking. I got it all on film, but you, I'm, I'm video, guys. You're going to love it. Four Chinese, six <laughs> Pakistanis, and two Canadians walk in a bar. You I'm think sorry. the two and, Pakistanis and, and, and the joke is they see Lynette on a, on a stripper pole. <laughs> Man. No I one wants to see that. To no one out. wants to see that. No one. My eyes. I think I'm blind. Thanks, All right. Man. I have to ask Would you rather see Lynette on a stripper pole or listen to her voice for five straight minutes? Die. My answer is I'd rather <laughs> die. <laughs> I'd rather what is die. Die. <laughs> oh, oh, man. man. No one wants to see that, man. Neither. No one wants to hear that, see that. Oh my gosh. Oh. That. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't even gonna go there. I <laughs> <laughs> wasn't going there. Woo! Guapo, Guapo just got it. That was so delayed. <laughs> also just oh, laugh about it later. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so yeah, we got some live auctions coming up. Uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good good transition, Rob. Thanks. Sorry. Oh, nice, that. Rob. Nice, nice. Uh, <laughs> crazy, crazy stuff. You're in the your one thing I can't I can't I can't figure out how she conned seven men. Conned seven men into marrying her. Yeah. Seven of them, man. That's a lot of men. That's a lot of men. Seven men? That's a lot, man. To be married seven times? That's crazy. It that is. is. Crazy. Are you that's sure crazy. they were human men? Hey, Dave hasn't even been married seven times. What's he on, like four or five? I think he's at five. Maybe we should get Dave and Lynette together. 
<laughs> no. Let's not do that to Dave. Dave's a nice guy. Yeah, no. Dave's, Dave's my like, dude. Yo, shout out, shout out to Dave. That's my dude. Dave's like, you know, at, at number five, uh, I started to think I might be the problem. <laughs> 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 they would go to her he'd say hey you look a lot like my sixth wife how many times you've been married five <laughs> you want to be my six <laughs> N- lucky number six oh man you know the oh, six man. times a charm the first time you marry for love second time is uh i don't remember yeah, third man. time is for money Man, the game has changed, man. Dave's thrift store is closed. Jeff's working for you. <laughs> Mitch, Mitch is retired. Like, there's just so many people, man. Rest in peace Jason. Jason passed away. Rest, Rest in peace. peace to Jason, you know. And I just want to uh, say this real quick. I'm in Florida. Yeah. D- d- <laughs> d- Jeremy's, Jeremy's taking on a whole city. <laughs> 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 went from coin pushers to taking on a whole city, dude. He's so good. That's, that's, that's so funny. much going on right now, dude. <laughs> dude, dude you you went from going, you're going to be the Florida governor. Whole city. <laughs> There's so I much going know. on, dude. It's like... Who would have thought at 700K, bro? It's you yeah. versus the city of, of Otter Creek, bro. It's like. <laughs> but it's the county. I'm like, I'm yeah, he's now he moved to the county. YouTube, the city's bro. over. You know, he's I at the county. I can only imagine, bro. If I get there on YouTube, bro, what am I doing, bro? I need to chill out, bro. <laughs> First, it was Jeremy <laughs> Hales versus Otter Creek. Now, Jeremy oh, Hales funny, man. versus the county. That's going to be Jeremy Hales versus the state of Florida. And then Jeremy oh, Hales man. versus the United States. Yeah, it, no. it, it sounds like it's getting there. <laughs> I'm gonna be like an advocate for like Hispanics or something at that like like point or something. I don't know. 500k. I'm gonna be fighting a battle t- to to do something funny. I don't know. <laughs> so so I'm gonna fight a battle so people can go live in court, and it's gonna be it's gonna be a federal court case, dude. <laughs> You went from coin pushers to battle with the city. You taking on a whole city. Hey, we we all grow at different lengths and speeds. <laughs> it does, man. It's just like, dude, who in the world? Uh, yeah. Ever since Jeremy got a big driveway, things have changed. Man, dude. <laughs> oh man. So yeah, it was been a crazy, crazy week, crazy day. <laughs> If you guys didn't see my video yesterday, this Rob, house, got, Rob, you gotta sue, Rob, you gotta sue Sherry. You need a sewer. But but Guapo, I talked to him yesterday a little bit, but I went to this house. I'm doing um the gentleman, his wife passed away, unfortunately. And um I'm doing a um an auction for him, and he left behind boxes of coins boxes of coins i'm talking about there's men sets and proof sets there's at least 35 40 american eagles silver eagles just ridiculous there's so much money in this house but he wants to walk away move on and he said hair sell it wow (laughs) he said he tried to take on cedar point (laughs) i remember that I remember when you took on Cedar Point. <laughs> you You're see, like, that was when like the explosion was happening, bro. I had to dim myself down, bro. Because before you know it, I'm taking on Cedar Point now, bro. Yeah, Grab was like, Grab was like, you know what? You give me a meal card, and I can eat every day. Yeah, we'll call it square. We'll, we'll and then he square. never goes there and get any food. <laughs> yo, yo, you, you're telling me. That I can that I can get what I paid for, and and you and that's it. We're good. Let's go. <laughs> that's exactly. He, he never went back. He never went back, man. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> they I'm gave like me and stuff. Jordan. I'm selling the stuff. They gave me and Jordan a but like a pass to use, and we never used it. That was the funniest thing. You had yeah. that pass. I was like, dude. He's like, I never used it. I never even used it, dude. Scott Roberts. It, it all started over a two-inch pipe, Jeremy. That's funny, man. It did. 
Only thing they had to do is lower his water bill, and, and he would still be just hanging out on a creek. If they didn't, they didn't pick him out and overcharge him specifically because he was an outsider. None of this would have happened. Thanks, Scott Roberts. Yeah, so yeah I'm auctioning off everything at the house. Thank you, Jane. So there's going to be an auction coming up that house. The dials, the furniture, the coins, the military stuff. The artwork, all that stuff is going to be up in auction. www.secondsense.com will be coming up. And uh, real quick before everyone goes, I know some people will be leaving sooner than others. But on, on Sunday, 8 o'clock is Jeremy's Sunday's Fun Days. I don't know how much fun, but it's always informative. Mark Feather will be there. Woo, Mark Feather. Then, <laughs> and then uh, Saturdays, we have Conky's Flipping Adventures. He's always on 8 o'clock Saturdays. Um, Guapo, Tuesdays. Eight o'clock. Tom so, Hanks. Tom Hanks will be there. Tom Hanks will be there. And uh Conky, I think uh him and Noreen will probably be making out. So we actually found Wilson. I think they're gonna be doing kissing demonstrations again. We found Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> we found Wilson. Tom Hanks will be there. And my auctions this Saturday, eight o'clock. Or no, eight o'clock. I'm like eight o'clock. Everyone's eight o'clock. One o'clock on this Saturday, my video game. Toy auction from the one unit I bought. It was the uh, shipping container unit. All that stuff's in this auction. And all the slot cars, Conky. All the die cast cars. Wrestling figures. Nintendo. Nintendo 64. Nintendo Dreamcast. PlayStation. Um, Transformers. Unbelievable stuff. So... <laughs> Great auctions. Yeah, I do have my eye on a few things in that auction. And Conky's going to add to his pile. He's got a big pile in my shop. He's going to add to it. So, um, some live auctions. Saturday live auction. Guapa, you're going to be there? I hope not. I want to buy a unit. Every time you uh, show up, you always buy my units. I'll be there. Tom Hanks will be with me. We found Wilson. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> We found we found Wilson. Don't worry about it, guys. We'll be together. Redneck Treasure. Good to see you smiling and laughing. Yeah, I'll be there with Waldo. I found Waldo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still looking for him, so don't tell me where he's at. You want to know where he was, Rob? I know where he's at. First of all, Waldo is like Jeremy. So it's like that's what they play in Otter Creek. Where's Jeremy? It's like, where's Waldo? That's like the cops are like, where's Jeremy today in the sheriff department? He might be at this town hall meeting. Yep. Oh, my gosh. So what do you got going on tomorrow, Hales? Uh, I think what I'm ultimately going to end up doing is recruit Tom Hanks from Guapo because they found Wilson. <laughs> what you need to do is make a Tom Hanks... Wilson, Jeremy movie. Or maybe Tom Hanks could play Jeremy in a movie and Wilson could play Guapo. What do you think about that, Conky? I don't know who Wilson is. You never seen uh, Castaway? No. Long story short, Tom Hanks in a plane. Plane goes down, stuck on an island for a long time. He makes a friend. The friend is a volleyball that he puts his blood hand on, and it's a print, and he calls it Wilson because it, it was made by Wilson Company. Okay, so it makes sense. That, yeah, okay, yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, so Wilson was a volleyball. And yeah, that so was Wilson a, should play Guapo. Right, and, but he stuck on a, a – <laughs> yes. Oh, man. That's right, because the volleyball said Wilson on him. All right, I get it now. Well, LRG said Tom Hanks stayed for the whole movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh man it's been a crazy crazy week ladies and gentlemen and uh as you already know hail's crazy week and we always love getting together i mean obviously you see how much fun we have together we always have a good time laughing and uh hopefully jeremy will be coming to cleveland soon and we're all going to get together play some pinball maybe do some crazy stuff cindy you know lou Says super sticker. Thank you, Cindy Lou. Nice. Picture, I'm starting too. to think that this is the only hour out of the week that Jeremy gets to laugh. I think all the rest of it's just dealing with BS down in Outer Creek. And people don't realize. I mean, the stress level. 
it's one of those things that just goes on and on. And when you don't see an end in sight, you you don't know what the final outcome can be. People cannot realize the amount of stress. Thank you so much, Cindy Lou. Heavenly designs, nice. But um, it's stress, man. Very stressful. And I feel for him. I've been through doing a lot of crazy stuff. There's things that you guys don't know about that I'm dealing with and all that stuff. Um, it's stressful, stressful things. And I'm still dealing with my police thing. I'm waiting to hear back from the sheriff department. Hopefully they busted someone when they stole the stuff out of my unit. And uh, little B, I like that little B. You know, we call my daughter B and little B. Thank you for the super sticker. Um, Actually, I got to go to my daughter's lacrosse game today. I was almost late for the. I didn't get to eat dinner. Work, lacrosse game, cross game, live, live. Maybe eat, edit video. And then I have to go pick up a unit tomorrow. Thank you so much, little B. Debbie, so great for all of you to have fun together, and we we love having. I mean, we love hanging out with each other. It's a. It's one of those things on paper, Debbie. You'd be like, these four guys shouldn't be friends. These four guys probably shouldn't hang out and get along. And, you know, they're different backgrounds, different this, this, that, that, blah, blah. But it's like, we're like four brothers when we get together. It's like, we don't miss a beat. It's like, like time has never passed since the last time we've seen each other. I mean, that's yeah. how good of friends we are. And um, it's one of those things. And I appreciate the friendship and um, that I have with, all these guys here and you know we've called each other we've needed each other before for things you know obviously not everything gets to go on in front of everybody and there's things behind the scenes but we're there a support system for each other and it's great a great support system and uh you know there's times conky's called me there's times i've called conky called hales called uh guapo i mean Gu guapo's grandfather just passed away you know conky and i were there for him i mean jeremy would have been there if he was in town and we're there to support each other help each other and you know, we have great fun together. That's for sure. I mean, anytime we get together, we just laugh and. Yeah, I, I, I miss the fun of getting together. You know, in person and, and just sort of goofing off and and. Uh, I, yeah, that's the best word for it. Just goofing off and enjoying the. Just say the truth, Conky. You miss me driving the Gator. Just, just say it. You want me to drive Listen, that Gator? Look, look, asshole. When you wrecked the Gator, and this is public knowledge now, I, I don't have to hold back. I was sitting closest to the part that you brushed. I, I'm, I'm looking at it. Man, man, it's a good thing my arm's not. I totally know. <laughs> Kogi's arm's gone. Kogi yeah. got that one arm because of me. That would have been a good story, though, Kogi. We'd laugh at it now. would have been a great story, except for I'd be missing an arm. <laughs> <laughs> We'd laugh about it now, though, Kogi. That's either. <laughs> I should have been a little bit rougher on the rental car just to get you back for that. Uh, you were pretty rough on the rental car. Don't worry. Oh, I, I, I was fine. I wasn't driving it like I would have driven. My I just car can't believe day. we didn't. Get, the only thing that saved us, I think, was that the torrential downpour we had to drive through the next day. Because that thing, I mean, the undercarrier is mud everywhere. Oh, yeah. it, it had to have been like, there's, there's probably sticks and twigs attached to the bottom and everything else. Oh, man. Yeah, that, that was what not you, pretty. What do you got going on tomorrow, Conks? Oh, tomorrow I'm doing the paperwork I should have done a week ago. Nice. <laughs> so we'll get that out of the way and uh, hopefully, Saturday, hopefully Saturday go to the auction. But if I do, it'll just be me. Nareem won't be able to make it Saturday. So are you planning on going Saturday or no? Yeah, I'll be there. All right. Do you guys buy black powder rifles or pistols? Um, I mean, typically the thing about black powder is that the value, they're not very high usually. They don't bring a lot of money. Um, depends on the, who makes the black powder, the condition, the age, all that kind of stuff. Typically, I don't buy much. I try to sell more things for people. I mean, I'll buy like storage units and things like that, obviously. But most of the time when I go, people want me to buy stuff off of them. How do I explain this? I'm an auctioneer. And as an auctioneer, I sell things. There's no set value. Okay. So, um, Harriet Williams, we appreciate you sharing your lives with us. Hey, we appreciate you, Harriet Williams, and everyone that's watching tonight. Thank you guys so much. Um, 
Sorry, Conky, I lost my train of thought there. You're talking about the auction is an auction or you don't necessarily buy anything. Right. Because how do I put this? I don't have a set price for things. I start everything at one dollar. So, example, I have this pocket knife here. I'll start at one dollar. If it sells for a dollar, sells for a dollar, sells for fifty dollars, sells for fifty dollars. There's a lot of items that I have no clue what the value is going to be that day at the auction. I have an idea. Some things are easier than others. It's easier to say, okay, well, what a silver coin is going to go for than what's this crazy looking owl thing going to go for at auction. Yeah, this could go for $5. This could go for $100. If two people fall in love with this item, it could go to the, the top of the moon. But I can't pay you on what it might go for. I got to pay you on what I think it might, the lowest it could go for. So if I think it could go for a dollar, I'll pay you half of that 50 cents. You know what I'm saying? And the same token, this could go for a hundred dollars, but I don't know if it can go for a hundred, if it's going to sell for a hundred, but there's things I do know they're going to sell for a hundred and then I'll be willing to pay more money for it. Does that make sense? But that kind of throws back to that, that, that thing that happened. Oh, I think it happened. We've talked about it on the show before where the guy went and bought something from something from like the Bing dynasty or, or some, I forget what it is, even, but it was something old. It wound up going for millions of dollars. He, he gave him like a hundred bucks for it. I mean, it was just stupid. How, the, the money he gave him for, it. but the guy didn't know what it was worth until he actually sold it. And uh, they came back and sued him and said, you know, we want more of that money. And I don't think they got anything. And that's one of those things. I mean, it could always bring more. I've seen things that brought stupid money, and conky has been to so many auctions. He'll tell you there's things that have, you're, you know, he was just at auction. They're paying more than retail. You could buy the same thing on eBay for half the price. No, no, not no, not half the price. Or four, that one fourth a, of the price. That was a crate. No, not even. I, there was the craziest thing I've ever seen. I, I, an item on e, that would sell on eBay for nine ninety nine was selling for over five hundred dollars. So obviously, uneducated people buying stuff. Well, they were, and I'm not using this word in a derogatory way. They were, they were Amish, right? Which is, un, un, I'm not trying to be negative or anything else, but Amish people, I love Amish people. I have a lot of Amish friends. I worked in Amish as an auctioneer, um, but Amish, they stopped going to school at the age of, I think 12 or 13, 14. Well, and yeah, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, as these, you stop going to school as soon as you get to that age, whatever that age is, and you start working. I'm just that's the facts. They don't go to college. They don't go to high right. school. I'm just saying they, their education level stops at a certain point. But I, I think more than that, it's, you know, if well, they, they just had an internet connection, they, they'd have known that they could have got it on, you know, on, online for, uh, you know, 10 bucks. So what you're saying is they should have talked to their kid. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> that always guy. I love the, uh, the, I remember going down there to be like the, I was like the young kids. They like put speakers in their in their buggies. Some of them put like lights on it, which you're not supposed to have any lights in the Amish community, um, like on their buggies and things like that. But they would put lights on them. They put like speakers and all stuff. They can't have electricity. They can't buy battery powered things though. Yeah, yeah. So they'll, they'll usually convert whatever they have, or, or, or they'll buy like like cordless tools and stuff like that, and find a way to charge them. Without plugging them in, it's so someone said ninth grade, someone said eighth grade for the Amish, and that's just the fact of life. I mean, um, I go to work all the time and I see Amish kids up there on a roof, no harness, no nothing, working away. I can't believe it's legal. I mean, child labor laws, and I guess they don't apply to the Amish because of their religion, but I mean, these kids are doing things like. If they make one mistake, fall, they're dead or going to be seriously injured for the rest of their life, you know, and they're 15 year old kids up there, 14 year old kids. I just look at my son and I'm like, man, I want to want him up on this roof, you know? <laughs> yeah. I, I wouldn't want to be up on a roof anymore. I used to, I used to do roofing and it's, it's, it's not for me anymore, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, one mistake, it's all over. Where's Jeremy? Conky's live. That's right. This Saturday, 8 o'clock, you doing any auction this Saturday? Uh, I doubt it. We've got plenty of stuff to auction off. It's just 
we uh <laughs> probably not gonna do it for a while. I, I want I want to get some of that Amish money. How do I get that? <laughs> you know that that I, I'm sorry, I'm still thinking of that because I'm I'm looking on my phone as the auction is going on. I'm thinking, man, that, that's a it's it's, it's a ten dollar item that, that they're paying all that money for. It's only worth what it's worth. Dates, I guess. Long. So, yeah, I got to drive and go pick up this unit tomorrow. I'm I'm excited. I'm hoping the the safe was a safe bet. So so, where's the unit you're going to pick up tomorrow? Painesville. Painesville. How about that? You're going to be up there in another week. I I guess I could wait. <laughs> I mean, if you could talk them into letting you wait a week. <laughs> I'll be there in a week and a half. Yeah. <laughs> I got that unit. I don't think they're going to let me wait that long, Conk. No. I don't want to wait that long either. Well, you want to see what's in there. I do. I can wait. Don't get me wrong. The last safe, it took me five days after the unit to open it. I just didn't have the time. I had all this other stuff to do, and people were like, how could you sit there and not open it? Well, the unit was so already so awesome, so it, it wasn't that difficult. And then half of me was like, well, the safe's empty. The other half of me, I thought something was in it, but it was awesome. It was well, awesome. I mean, but you gotta, yeah. I hope something's in it too, just like just like you do. But you know, you you did have a pretty awesome safe the last one. The last two safes I've opened, Conky, have been good. So, you know, they say third time's a charm. Well, it could be even better. I'm, oh. I'm just thinking of the, you know, the numbers. How many, how many Gold safes points. have Conky, you opened? That... Oh, Conky, don't be peeing on my parade over here. <laughs> Conky, I'm getting my umbrella out. <laughs> I'm not peeing on your parade. I'm not peeing okay. on your parade. <laughs> I want to hear positive thoughts. <laughs> About how awesome the how many gold coins they could fit it's in this. It's gonna be filled with silver and gold and diamonds. You couldn't even believe they closed the door, Conky. Yeah. Because of how much money was in the in the safe. Well, talk to me, Conky. Talk to me that way. I don't want to hear the negative. I wish the best for you. Hey, look at you know, I mean. I think it's going to be, I'm, I'm, you know me, I'm an optimist, Conky, but you got to be an optimist in this. I mean, look at Starla. We inspired her to buy four storage units. And hopefully this will inspire some more people when they see how awesome the safe is. Hope, hopefully every one of those four storage units had a safe filled with gold and silver. and Depends on what she spent on the four storage units. Jewelry. No, the best is when you don't spend anything and, and, and you wind up, you know, Pulling out something that uh, nobody saw, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's always better when you spend nothing. And then when you spend a lot, you hope <laughs> something. Well, like that one with all those slot cars, I spent 500 and something on that, 510. Yeah, just the not... slot cars, I'll make all my money back just on the slot yeah. cars. I haven't really looked at them lately with how they're doing, but. I know there's some at thirty dollars, some at twenty five dollars, some at twenty dollars for pairs. Yeah. And I don't know. I, I mean, all together, I'm going to assume just the slot cars alone, I'll probably get close to a thousand dollars. I'm assuming. I could be wrong. Well, yeah. that and there was all all kinds of other things in there too. So basically, almost the entire auction is everything from that unit. Okay. And I think it's already over five thousand dollars. Well, there you go. And I spent 500 something. So I already 10 times my money on right. it, and the auction don't end until Saturday. Anytime you can add a zero. <laughs> my goal is to add, well, add that zero and then times it by two, Conky. I'm hoping it hits 10 or more. There you go. And then you buy a $10,000 storage unit. Life is good. But like Jeff said, how many units you buy to get these good ones, you know? And, you know, I got two great units back-to-back. -back. 
And then I've got some, you know, and I bought another unit the other day that was decent. I put it out the other day that was uh, the mad scientist unit, the scientist unit. The guy passed away. And that was, you know, a lot of people wanted to purchase, but he had a lot of uh, electrical equipment that I'm familiar with. And I found a microscope in there, a $300 microscope. Hmm. I found all kind of interesting testers and pieces and things like that. So there's three old radios in there. There's all kind of cool stuff. Nice. But I only paid 170 for that unit, but it's one of those units. If <sighs> see the auction platform gives me an opportunity, as Conky would tell you, that I can sell a lot of things that would be difficult to sell. Because yeah, I mean, you can sell anything. Don't get me wrong, but you know, you got a group of dishes. Okay, you're gonna put on Facebook Marketplace. I got these this uh, lot of dishes, or I got this lot of tools, or whatever it is. You know, you could put it a group of guys and put it on Facebook, and hopefully someone buys it. Put it on eBay or something like that. But in an auction, I just put it up there. I put it at a dollar. Wherever it goes, it goes. What's up, Travis? Where's Travis? What you doing, Willis? Travis says he just got. I was I was just talking about you, Travis. I was saying earlier that uh, half of me thought that when I showed up, this crazy Travis guy was going to have a real ramp and a real motorcycle for me to jump. <laughs> <laughs> I'd break my neck trying. Patty said, "Let's see, collectible swords and such. My dad, a collection of hoarder, and my sister. Now I have to go through all of it and sell most of it." Well, that's what I've been dealing with. I deal with the hoarders all the time. And um, so every situation I walk into is different. I got some hoarders, like the house I was just in the other day. I put out the video Wednesday. You know, that gentleman just, they had a lot of nice stuff. They had money, not a hoard whatsoever. And the same token, I'm dealing with the one guy that's hoarded all the brand new tools and everything else. So it's just, everybody's different. Everyone collects different things and, you know. And this line of work, especially when you buy storage units, there's little things you need to look for. And experience helps out a lot. Because a lot of people are like, Rob, you buy so many good units. Da, da, da. Well, I buy a lot more units than most people. Guapo pointed that out today. And uh, i also been doing it a lot longer. I bought more units overall. And experience is experience. It's just like anything else you do. The more experience you have, the better you're going to be at it. It's like driving, for example. I've been teaching my daughter how to drive. She's 15 and a half years old. And it's very weird because we drive around and they're like, you know, because she's invisible conky. So, like, <laughs> people are looking at me like, you know, three heads. They think I'm, I'm driving the car in England or something, you know, like an English car or something. Well, now, if, if your daughter's invisible, if she gets in the car, does the car become invisible too? Because that'd be dangerous. No. Okay. I just want to make sure. Well, if I'm in the car, yeah. No. Now, my wife's car, maybe. She's like Wonder Woman. She's got like that invisible jet. Yeah. I wish your dro wife drove an invisible jet. We'd have got to Maryland faster. To get <laughs> got us home a lot quicker, too. Yeah. I've been taking some road trips, man. Jeff and I, we just went to Lancaster. We went to Michigan a little bit ago. I've been, I've been buying these units three hours away, two and a half hours away. I've been just trying to find good units and buying them and. uh this time of year is real tough, too, because it's tax season. Yeah, people got money. They're and units up. are going for crazy money. Well, it's funny because you say tax season. That's when I have to pay taxes. <laughs> I don't get refunds. I, I just figure out how much more I got to send them. Tax season usually means to me I'm filing an extension, and then I'm worrying about it in September. Yeah. No, I usually get it in in time, but my accountant is always happy about it. No, I, was, uh, I haven't turned my taxes in on time since I've been doing taxes. 15 years now. But my taxes are a lot more complicated. Not as bad as they used to be. They used to get really complicated, but that's when I used to do a lot more real estate buying and selling and stocks and things like that. I remember the one year... My accountant said, Rob, I filed every form. <laughs> and literally, I swear, my tax thing was like this thick. But I did so many different from real estate, buying and selling houses that year. Um, I sold and bought some stock that year. My real estate business, this business, the, the auction business. And it was just like, I think, 
I don't know if I had a kid that year too. It was all crazy. It was just all the stuff. It was like everything you could imagine file. He had a file for me. <laughs> I'm just laughing. I'm like, <laughs> so yeah, I've been, I do the extension of everything else. I do my own taxes. Well, I, I have an accountant, but I am the gentleman that puts together. My wife used to do it and she didn't want to do it no more. <laughs> so I'm the guy that has to get all the stuff together. Yeah. It's a, lot, a lot of work. Conky knows he runs his own business. Tax time is never. Yeah, I, I, I dread it every year, but I got to. Yeah. It's like going to the dentist. It's like, you know, there's nothing looking forward to. We're not getting any refund back. And let me go real quick. We're about to get off here in a minute, but I appreciate everybody watching. But now people, I don't think realize that when they get a tax refund, that that's just the money that you already paid in taxes, you're getting back. It's not actually the government giving you money. That's and a lot of people confuse this because they think I get this tax refund because the government's gave me all this money and like my one buddy, he said his wife got all mad. It's like, why don't you get a tax refund? And he goes, I work for myself. They pay all these taxes. They're just taking those taxes out of their check and then they're getting their money back at the end of the year. So a lot of people, I don't, I don't think people, some people realize that. Aspect. Well, it's, it's money that you're loaning the government for zero interest. Correct. So to speak. I mean, it just, you're basically giving the government money for a whole year period, like Conky just said, at a 0% interest rate that they can utilize for whatever purpose is possible. And if you don't pay them, I guarantee you they ain't charging 0% interest, Conky. No, nope. they want their they want their money and the interest and their fines and their penalties and every damn thing else. Yep. And one thing I tell people, because like, oh, I never get this or that. It's like the, they usually wait, I think, what, five years? Or seven years. Seven. Seven years because they want all that interest and penalties to accrue. So if they come in the first year and say, hey, you didn't blah, blah, blah. They'd rather wait seven years and they'll get you right before then. Trust me, they they have people watching that and boom, come right in. My dad one time, um, he used to purposely very slightly overpay his taxes. And then he got audited one year and made them refund and it wasn't a lot of money but they made him refund i say my dad made the government refund him the, the money he overpaid after the audit he says he never got audited again after that you know my uh my father-in-law who passed away years ago god bless his soul but uh he was a financial advisor but uh i remember they audited him and uh that was the last time they audited him too they didn't <laughs> and hey I tell people all the time, I, I pay my taxes. They come in out of me, they're going to want to, I guarantee you they will walk out. Conky's been in my building before. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and tell me what my inventory is. You go ahead and give me a price <laughs> on it, people. <laughs> my account every year, Robert, how much you got money? How much money in inventory? Uh, I don't know, 100000 200000 500000 I don't know. It's all, once again, Debatable because I'll go back to the owl. Is this worth a dollar or a hundred dollars? Well, I mean, that's what the whole case that New York made against uh, former President Trump. You know, they asked him how much his buildings were worth, and he he wrote a number down that he thought was was the number, and they disagreed. So they they said he committed fraud. So I don't know. Yep, it's a, which is a weird fraud case in itself because um, usually there's victims in fraud. Usually you have to not pay the bank back, but for some reason they say that uh, even though he paid the loans that, that it was fraud, so I don't know. Literally every real estate transaction that ever goes down is like that, where you know, you'll, you'll put a, a guess of what you think it's worth. They have their own appraisers come in and appraise it, so you're really haggling over. The, the I used to be a special, a, a commercial appraiser. Okay. Yeah. So I know a lot about appraising. And one, a lot of people don't understand this appraisal is just an opinion of value. Right on the bottom of appraisal, it says this is an opinion of value, which means it's just someone's opinion. Worthless. Okay. Number two about appraisal, there's different things appraisal for. My uh, one employee, Shane, he just bought a brand new house. I should say brand. He bought a house. It's not a brand new house. He just bought a house. 
He goes, Rob, guess what the appraisal came in? This way he just told me today. What the house sold for. How can the appraisal come in exactly what the house sold for? Because that's Damn. how they appraise it. <laughs> okay. I mean, number two, appraisals. All these houses have been selling for 25000 over asking, 50000 over asking, blah, 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 blah. Okay, that's all fine and dandy. None of these houses should have got financed. Zero zilch. What, how can they be paying more than what the house is valued at? Who's doing the appraisals? And that's how we got in the financial situation in 2008 because they were giving people more money than what the properties were worth. They're overvaluing the properties. Same thing's happening right now. I'm just letting you know. There's no way if the house, okay, it's worth two hundred thousand dollars. Someone comes in and gets two hundred and fifty thousand. Where's the appraisal? Who's coming in with the appraisal? The banks are like, oh yeah, oh, it's worth two hundred and fifty because they offered fifty thousand more than they were asking for. Even the market said it was worth two hundred. That's why the radio estate person said it's worth two hundred. That's why they put it for two hundred and then went for two fifty. Supply to blah blah blah. But my whole point is the appraisals, appraisals, appraisal. It's just an opinion of value. It's all bogus. They did appraisal for my house and it was for a different purpose. Okay. And it came in super low and the house next to me. So for a hundred thousand dollars more than what my appraisal came in for, I have more land, a bigger house and updated. But once again, like I said, it's an opinion of value. It depends on what that appraisal is being done for. And obviously the appraisers doing the appraisal for the bank for their loan. So he's going to match up the number to the loan number. Okay. Just to get it done. Just to get it done. And I'm just telling you, that's how it works all at the end of the day. And it's just opinion of value. Because people always go, Rob, can you appraise this for me? Because I get asked all the time in an auctioneer. I can appraise anything. But once again, it's just an opinion of value. And most things they get appraised are for insurance purposes. And so the appraisal is very, very high. And people will come to me, I got this item. And it was appraised for $5,000. Okay, what was the appraisal for? Well, insurance purposes. Well, typically insurance purposes, the appraisals are always high. And they come up with that thing because, you know, replacement cost and all this different things. If you had to go buy a brand new. Well, so so you can apply that to real estate. Even There are three ways to appraise real estate. One is replacement value. How much would it cost to build another house that, that exact same way? Two is comparables. What compared to other properties in the neighborhood or in the area? What, you know, how does this compare square footage wise? You do. You do the math. Number three is by income potential. So if you have a, a property that's bringing in, you know, say a commercial property is bringing in $150,000 a month, they use that to as a derivative to figure out what the property is worth when they when they figure out what the capitalization rate is on it. Which is true, except you cannot use that to sell a double. You, I mean, I'm just saying that, for example, well, I, I have rental properties that have like multiple units. Okay, right, but but my like saying is they're coming up with a cap of rate or whatever for that property. Okay, what it's worth or whatever. But I'm saying if you did it by what you actually the rental income is, the property would be worth. I'm saying if you sold it, it'd be worth. I'm just saying my comparable properties. It's worth way more than what the actual value of the property is. Right, because it's not commercial real estate until I think it has, I think four units is still residential. Once you get to five or above, that's commercial. And that's a very good point, Kong. And I'm just, people that don't understand that they put a cap rate in them or there's ROIs, return on investments. Right, Most yeah. Most it's basically how long is it going to take you to recoup your money if you purchase a property, say, for a million dollars, and the cap rates, you know, 9.7. That means it's going to take you around 10 years to get your money back. Okay. In rough layman's terms. There's mm -hmm. a lot to go into it, but this. So that's what cap rate or return on investment. Everything, that's what people are looking at. And what I was trying to say is that as a real estate properties I've had, I try to sell properties before on the cap rate. <laughs> it didn't work, you know. I mean, as an investor, you go, hey, look at, you know, if you bought this house for this much money off of me, I'm generating this much income. Your ROI is 7.2 years. There, there used to be a way to do it, and the way they would do it is, and it was illegal, okay? 
but they would do a, a backdated um, backdated land contract. So what would happen is you would go to buy a house from a, a house flipper. Guy would buy a, a total piece of trash house, uh, fix it up a little bit to flip it, flip it to a, a, a green investor that that w- was actually buying it off of the the you know the the cap rate. Only the banks wouldn't finance it that way. So what they would do is they would backdate. And sometimes they didn't even backdate. Sometimes they'd even um, they would sort of sell you the house on paper but not give it to you for six months. And then it looks like a refinance. And when you're refinancing, there's, there's more options with more banks where you can get a higher loan to value rate. And that's what got some people in trouble around here. There was a there was an outfit in Akron that was doing that, and they uh, a buddy of mine was working for him. Um, not in the capacity where he knew enough about the business where he was like found guilty of anything, but he remembers the day the FBI raided the place, and uh, you know they're like calling filing cabinets full of papers out of there and computers oh and arresting people and all that. But that was back in the early 2000s. That was way before 2008. Keenan said her taxes went up 35 percent. I only use the school system a total of three years. I have no kids. How is this fair? Well, my buddy complains about this all the time. I'm going to tell you what I told him. Most property value is because of the school system. Okay. A lot of people move to certain areas because the school system. Okay. So a lot of times the value in your property, it sounds dumb as it could be, but because you live in that certain neighborhood and the schools are good, it makes it a more desirable neighborhood, which makes your property value more. So a lot of people complain about the taxes in the schools and I'm not going to pay money to the schools or taxes, anything else. Well, good schools lead to better neighborhood, which leads to higher property value. And anyone can argue that with me. You can go ahead and argue, blah, blah. But I can tell you what, you look at the, you know, high income neighborhoods, they got high, got good schools. You look at low income neighborhoods, unfortunately, a lot of them have schools that are underperforming. And people be like, well, it's because of this or that. No, it's because of tax money and the higher taxes, you can pay more money for better teachers. And in the end of the day, better teachers are going to give you better students. It's a simple fact. A better coach is going to give you a better athlete. It's just, you know, better auctioneer is going to get you higher results out of your stuff. Unless you're an Amish country. But it's just one of those no, things. That's rough. <laughs> so, I don't know. I said a lot. Probably too much content. Yeah, we're probably we're probably boarding a little cl- too close to the the political speak and. But uh, school districts. That's why you pay money to property and pay taxes for schools. And you know, you guys all went to school, so remember that. I know a lot of people said I don't have kids and all this other stuff. Well, you went to school, and when you went to school, you probably had a pretty good school, so. You know, you want the future generate. Everyone complains about, oh, my gosh, these are the people that are going to be taking care of me when I'm old. Well, you make sure they have good schools. <laughs> well, you know, I went to school. We paid for the school I went to because I went to private schools. And I think that, you know, there should be. Um, I don't think the school should get the public school should get all the damn money. You well, know, they don't I mean? anymore. They changed it. They what? They changed it. They did? Yes. Oh, good. So now if you go to a private school, there's grant money. They call it grant money. But basically, it's the money that they would send the public schools for that student. So now there's, you have a choice. There's people going to private schools that couldn't afford private schools before because of this grant money. And not all schools are doing it. Not all private schools accept it. But a lot of the schools are going that way. I just know because... I, uh, my kids go to private school, or did one of my kids go to private school? Oh, okay. Public school. 
I didn't realize. I don't know when they changed that. It, it wasn't it like just, that when I was two years ago. Who? I think it was two years ago. Oh, this okay, is the second year, really Conky. Recently. It just started. Really recently, though. Yeah, very, very recently. It just started that you could go to and use that money. You can, you know, you could go to a school, high school, the same way. Now you could go to St. Ed's or St. Ignatius, and that's one of the two best high school, all boy high schools in this area, known for their sports programs. They cost around fifteen thousand dollars a year, I think, to go to those schools somewhere in that frame. But out of that fifteen thousand, I think. The max grant money is like sixty five hundred bucks or something, Conky. So that sixty five hundred could come off that tuition, and then they didn't get any other incentives, and the parents would have to pay the difference. But most of like the private schools that are you know kindergarten through eighth grade, that sixty five hundred dollar would cover the tuition. Hmm, but nice. so. It is good. I mean, that factor, I mean, gives kids choices and everything else. And, um, you know, and then today well, we all want the best for the kids because they hopefully will. I, I think what it does, what it does is the way, the way I thought about it when I, when I, when I thought about what a good idea would be to do that is it would hold the public schools accountable. Now that now they can no longer say, well, you got to send your kid here and we're just going to give them whatever crap education we want to give them. Now they're actually fighting for the money. You know, now they actually have to compete for the, the the student to go there and and by offering a better school experience. And by that I mean you know learning and all that, not you know. Not yeah, like no political talk. We're not talking political, we're just talking about schools and all that stuff. And uh, you know, as an auctioneer, I deal with every religion, every race, every political aspect. Um, my whole life, very diversified. Um, you know, I came up from a very small little community, not a small community, but you know, and I branched out. I mean, I, I worked in hospitality. I don't know how many people worked in hotels or restaurants in their life. Um, you come across, I came across people from that were illegally in this country. I came across people that immigrated from this country from all over the world, from places from Sudan, Ivory Coast of Africa, um, Dominican Republic, um, you know, on and on and on. I could go through all the people I've met from all these different countries, religions. I mean, when I went to college, my first, I, I, I lived in a quad. That was a, it was the cheapest thing I could live. I went to culinary school in New York and, uh, my dad's a steel worker. My mom's staying home. Mom, family of six kids, not very big income, and uh, so try to stay on the cheapest cheap. So I stayed in a quad. My 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 three roommates, my quad. I had a, a guy from um, New Jersey, a gentleman from Mexico. That if you met him, you would not know he was from Mexico, but he spoke four language fluently. Very 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 wealthy individual, but. He told me, I said, man, how do you have all this money? He goes, Rob, I'm from Mexico. You're either rich or poor. There's no middle class. Yeah. And that's when I first realized in my what middle class meant. You know, people that don't appreciate middle class, and I know it's things going on and blah, blah, but a lot of countries, there's no middle class. You're either rich or you're poor. There's no in the middle having a decent life. It's either you're on the bottom or you're on the top. There is no middle. So we should appreciate that factor. Um you know, that just the, the whole middle class. But and my other gentleman was um he was gay. So and those are the three people I lived with. And you talk about life shock experience. You know, I, I you know, I lived with a Mexican guy, a guy from New York or New Jersey and uh, a gay guy. I lived by, by three roommates when I moved into this quad and and we had no bathroom. No bathroom. Zero bathroom. We had to walk down the hall. Everyone shared a community bathroom. Oh, wow. And yeah, so imagine waking up. Yeah, you go to the bathroom. Yeah, walk down the hallway. Two in the morning, conky. Yeah, no, you were like waiting in line behind eight people or something. And then if you when you took a shower, there'd be like you know it was just like going to like a gym or something. There was like you know they had stalls, but you know all the water's running down a trough. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but I, I I did you you live uh you appreciate life more when you get in the circumstances and you live with people that you never thought in a million years you would live with all different aspects and just told different ideas about life. 
and you share a bathroom, communal bathroom with, I don't know, a hundred and some men. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, life is good. But my whole point know. is that, you know, life is, you know, just, it's all different. I mean, and I accept everyone for who they are. I appreciate everybody for who they are. People get so caught up in this and that, and blah, blah, blah. And then the day we're all people. Okay. And just because someone thinks differently, believes differently, everything else, you got to get to the point where it's like, it's okay. It's okay to think differently. If people all thought the same, nothing would ever get done in this world. If people were all the same, nothing would ever get accomplished. All the differences and ideas and all that stuff is why America became the greatest country in the world is because people had freedom of thought, freedom to express, freedom to do what they wanted. And no one sat there and told me, you can't do that. No one sat there and said, you can't think about that. You can't believe that. And I mean, think about the things they've got accomplished in the in the small amount of time, all the stuff that people wanted to do in the history of mankind. They wanted to fly, wanted to go under the oceans, wanted to go to space. We did it all. But people for thousands and thousands and thousands of years wanted to do that. And it all happened within a hundred year time frame. You know? Yep. And, and, you know, we live in the greatest time in the world. And I know everyone's like, oh, it's all crazy. Da, da, da. There's no other time I want to live in. I got central air. I got heat, central heat. I got central plumbing. <laughs> I got, I, I can jump in my car and just drive. I go 300 miles, 500 miles. I go drive to California. I could go drive to New Mexico. I go drive to Florida, go visit Hales. You know, I don't know. I mean, life's great. I can go jump on a plane. I could be in Dubai in 12 hours. You know, I mean, that's just, I mean, the world's crazy. So appreciate why we got it. Yeah. Are you, calm? you don't know how long it's going to last. No, it's like life, man. You don't know how long it's going to last. And, you know, some people get one second in this world. Some people get a hundred years. And, uh. There's no guarantee how long yours going to get, you know. And um, I was talking to Jeff, you know, his grand, his dad just turned 90 years old. I said, man, this is a blessing. And just imagine you got to enjoy your dad for all those years. And my dad passed away six years ago at 70 some years old. You know, I couldn't imagine my dad lived to 90, you know. Yeah. When I busted open that safe the other day, first thing I thought about was, man, I wish I could call my dad and tell him about these guns I found. Because he was an avid gun collector. He had, I think, 70, 80 guns. Hmm. But, you know, I still told them. I just couldn't call them. Very conks. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I, I lost my dad when I was in my early 20s. So, wow. You know, <laughs> that's there's a lot of things I wish I could share my, with my dad that I can't. Same with my mom. I, I lost my mom two years after I lost my dad. Wow. So I've been, uh, you know, parentless since uh, 93. <laughs> so and it's, uh, the only thing I'm saying is appreciate the time we got ladies and gentlemen and this time we got to share together tonight awesome awesome time we got to talk to Jeremy we got to talk to Guapo Conky and myself and um, we appreciate every single one of you guys watching just checking out our videos checking out our channels supporting us and um, we try to entertain we try to educate we try to do what we can and uh, we're just people just like everyone else out there and uh we have lice and we appreciate your support. And um, I don't even know. I mean, you got to check out Conky's Saturday, 8 o'clock. Yeah, something I haven't mentioned during our, our, our get-together this evening is something did happen in our household uh, probably two or three hours after the, the, uh, the live last week. You know, we get off live at like nine o'clock, so it was, you know, one of those middle of the night things that woke us up, and we we wound up we wound up getting up at two o'clock in the morning and uh, had to leave the house. But I'll get into that. I'll, uh, I guess we'll share that Saturday what happened. So yeah, check out Saturday eight o'clock. Find out what happened to Conky two in the morning getting up. I don't even want to know. It's gonna be tough. And um, 
Yeah, it has to do with one of the dogs. So. And then uh, Saturday, this Saturday, I got my auction, toys, video games, um, slot cars. I know Conky's going to be bidding. Hopefully, you guys will be bidding against Conky. Yeah, hopefully, you won't. <laughs> now, then, feel uh, free to bid against me. I don't, you know, Whatever we can do to get Rob's auction up to $10,000, we'll, we'll, we'll do go it. Go higher. 15, Conky. There you go. And then um, Sunday, 8 o'clock, Jeremy. Sunday fun day with what uh, what the hails and then Tuesday eight o'clock we got Guapo, he's always got tons of stuff to to sell, and um, I saw Roy in here. Avery yeah, Roy. he was I bidding was... against him. Myself were bidding against each other, and then it was just me and then Guapo and me were bidding against each other. So I don't yeah. know if Roy knows about Saturday's auction or not. The, oh, the one sure. That... Okay, he's on top of things, man. He was there today, Conky. Okay, I, I, Roy, if you're watching, I may be there Saturday. Call me before, because I got some stuff I got to get off of Roy too. Oh my gosh, he's got stuff from everybody, man. Yeah, well, I mean, there, there's a. I don't know if Roy wants me to share this, and I'll let him share a, a story about one of the things I'm getting off him. Um. Yeah, I'll, I'll let him figure that out if he wants to share. Let him story. share the story. So. You want to pray tonight, Conky? You want me? I'll do it. All right. Conky's going to do a prayer, everybody. You know how my prayers are, short and sweet. Mm -hmm. Okay. God, we thank you for this time we got to spend together with uh, uh, me and Rob and earlier uh, Guapo and Jeremy joining us. We pray that you look out for Jeremy and George and his uh, his whole uh, his whole family down there with uh, Deanna and everybody. Um we pray that uh, this truly is a, a joke about the, uh, the 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 threats and everything, and we ask that you remind us that we're all one uh, one human race and that we should get along better than we are. All right, Amen, Amen, hey, Amen. And that's right. We are one human race. In the end of the day, and I'll say this one last time: in 2024, you would think that mankind would have come a lot farther and be more civilized and all this other stuff. And instead of spending all this money trying to kill each other, we would actually be trying to spend all this money saving each other. And just think of all that money that was spent on missiles, bombs, guns, grenades, tanks, airplanes, and all that stuff. If that was spent on trying to solve, you know, solve cancer or heart disease or any other horrible or disease out hunger, there. Hunger or homelessness. I mean, there's... Just go on and on. Just think about where the world could be if we actually, instead of acting like we're civilized and actually became civilized people, instead of still trying to club each other with clubs and who's got the biggest stick uh, mentality that is, you know, back in the old day. So, but once again, please hit the thumbs up. Check out Conky Saturday. Find out what happened, why he woke up at two in the morning. Oh, and everybody's fine. It's just, it's going to be a story. Yeah, it's just going to be a story. And then don't forget, guys, Sunday, what the hails. Well, he's got so much. Tomorrow's video, everything else, so much craziness. And uh, I think tomorrow's video I'm putting out, um, I bought a storage unit about three hours away. I think I'm going to put out that video tomorrow because I, I have to get, pick up the unit tomorrow. I don't think I'm going to put out that video. So I don't know. I'm trying to figure out how to work all the videos. I got so much editing to do and... Yeah. Well, I, I had to put my video out yesterday. Tuesday night, I started editing the video, went down and watched TV with the kids, fell asleep on the couch. I woke up conky. I was like, man, I'll just edit in the morning. I'm like, no, I got to get this done because I got to go drive to go pick up the storage unit that's three hours away. I can't edit on the way there. And then I got to do the film, the unit. I'm not going to be able to edit during that. And then I got to load the unit. I'm not going to be able to edit during that. So I was like, okay, stay up to 2.30 in the morning editing. I did a what the hails, you know. Mm-hmm. Got it all edited, blah, blah. So it's the stuff you guys don't see behind the scenes. You know, everyone's like, oh, YouTube, it's an easy thing. Only thing I do is videotape and put the video out and stuff. It's like, yeah, I wish it was that easy. <laughs> so the amount of time, energy, and effort, you know, and I put more effort in my videos the last year or so than I have in the past. So I used to do a one edit. Now I do a double edit. So I edit the video one time and then I'll go back through and re-edit the video 
a second time. So you're talking about just editing is usually two to four hours minimum. And it's one video times four videos a week. You do the math. It's a lot of time. Yep. So once again, we do appreciate everybody all watching. If you guys haven't, check out my auctions. www.secondsense.com. This Saturday, unbelievable. Next Saturday, unbelievable. Saturday after that, unbelievable. I can keep going. There's so many awesome auctions. I got two off-site auctions. Um, another one at the 40-year house that I got. And then um, the gentleman, his wife passed away. All the coins, all that stuff that was in uh, Wednesday's video. That auction will be coming up probably sometime in April. So, But we appreciate you guys. Thumbs up. Hit the thumbs up. Don't forget... Check out all of our videos. Anything you want to add before we leave, Conke? Yeah, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna give uh, the, the Roy Avery's all. I'm gonna give his story a little bit more attention. By by next AA, I'll have an item to show and tell, and I'll I'll tell a little story about uh, how I got it. So he'll tell us a little story, and uh, next, don't forget you're gonna hear Conky's story this Saturday about yeah. what happened at two in the morning. So we appreciate you guys all watching. Don't forget thumbs up, hit them on the way out and check out www.secondsense.com. Appreciate you guys all watching. Have a wonderful